The next question is, do you have a contractor's license for Alamo Heights? Yes. Do you have to? And, and you do need one. In Alamo Heights, if you're, if you're remodeling in the Alamo Heights city proper, you have to be a licensed contractor. Welcome to our Alamo Heights for a model, our mid-century modern kitchen. We wanted to take you on a tour and also we did some, we took some pre-questions so we have some questions that we want to answer on the video but also give you a tour of our almost finished Alamo Heights mid-century modern kitchen remodel. Look at this. It is beautiful. Kind so, of a monochromatic look there. Mm -hmm. All we have left is Appliances and backsplash. That's right. And then just the finishing and touches. Pictures. Just yeah, pictures. pictures. And so little trims. Little trims. Look at the, the positioning of this island. I love the positioning of this island. The location of it. How it's how it's going to be offset. part of. Yeah, offset is awesome. Mm -hmm. It makes the kitchen bigger. And y'all remember what it looked like before? Are they good to see all that? Yep. Of what it looked like before. We'll post some before pictures, but this uh -huh. was all enclosed with like all a weird All enclosed with a big opening. bin hood that came out to here. And all of this was, all of this is new. All of this is new. And this was so closed awesome. off the to the dining area. It was closed off right, too. It was all walled off. And then the last thing we did was we moved this back and made it flush. And that looks so much better. Mm -hmm. It is beautiful. So what were the questions we had? So the first question, I wrote them down. They said, is it harder to get permits in Alamo Heights or like approved to do the work? No, if you go by the rules, I mean, they're strict. Alamo Heights is, is really good at making sure you've crossed your T's and dotted your I's. More strict than San Antonio? Yeah, especially on architectural. They want it to make sure that it, it adheres to the standards of the neighborhood. And there's a lot of grandfathering and zoning rules that have changed in Alamo Heights. So you have a completely different set of rules that doesn't always apply in, in San Antonio. So you have to make sure that you're, um, since, since Alamo Heights is kind of like an architectural control committee and a permitting office. Oh, wow. So they look at it from the, the well-being and the, the uniformity of the neighborhood. Does it keep up with the values and so forth of the neighborhood? And so that's very much like what a home and owners association tries to do. But Alamo Heights, of course, has a lot more experience than any homeowners association. And then the next that's a great question, <laughs> by the way. The next question is, do you have a contractor's license for Alamo Heights? Yes. Do you have to? And, and you do need one. In Alamo Heights, if you're, if you're remodeling in the Alamo Heights city proper, you have to be a licensed contractor, and we do. We can builders as a licensed contractor there among many other small communities. Are there any stricter restrictions when working in Alamo Heights or modeling? Yes, there's certain hours that you cannot work that the city of San Antonio does not maintain, uh, does not require or will restrict. Like what? So also, um, where you park and so forth is a little, can be more strict in Alamo Heights. So you can't work the ass? Oh. Yeah, weekends are for, prohibited in Alamo Heights. Which we normally don't do anyways, because you're in a neighborhood and... Right. If there was an emergency, they would probably let you, but they would want you to notify them. And then you can't start before, I believe it's 8 p.m., 8 a.m., 8 a.m., and you can't work past 6. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Which that's not in San Antonio, right? No. Wow. I wish it was because where I live, it's super loud <laughs> doing construction. Um, what unique challenges are present when we're modeling in Alamo Heights? Well, it's not necessarily, I mean, we do have to keep in harmony with the architecture, which is not a challenge that we wouldn't do anywhere else. But some of the homes are of the age that they create unique challenges, such as foundation issues. There's a lot of foundation issues in Alamo Heights. There are also a lot of older homes in Elmo Heights, so you're going to be dealing with lead abatement, uh, even asbestos, and you're also going to be dealing with sidings and products that may have been discontinued. Mm 
which was happened in this house. Right. So the brick, for example, is not going to be made anymore. Mm -hmm. It's a really thin, linear very brick. Very linear, sandstone brick, mm -hmm. right? And so what we have to do is go to resources, other resources to get these materials. Sometimes salvage materials. Sometimes we actually salvage materials and for use in Alamo Heights or other communities that are over like Terrell Hills and so forth. Or so, you can get creative, like with here, they had had some of the brick inside and it was actually this wall. And so they were able to save that brick to use outside to do the repairs around the doors. And that's, and, and that's a good way to incorporate the saving of products into your design mm -hmm. so that you never notice that you're doing without it. But what you have is something that, where you do need it, you can use it, just yeah. like you were saying. Mm -hmm. What else? Any other questions? Electrical, is it different? or is this just Yeah, electrical can be, uh, some of the older electric in older homes, not just Alamo Heights, can either have, if you go back to the 60s, you can have aluminum wiring. And if you go back beyond that, well, even, even back beyond the 90s, you've got a three-wire system, and the codes now require four wires. And that's true of all, most older homes if you do significant remodeling. So electrical and even plumbing too. Mm -hmm. Plumbing sometimes has uh, old clay pipes and sewers out here and those sewers create problems and they have to be redone and even we find galvanized piping for water and that's obsolete as well. So you cannot use uh, galvanized pipe, it will eventually corrode. It's not preferred anyway. Yep. And, but anytime you get into older homes, your piping, your, your piping particularly, your your, uh, even your drain drain and sewer and supply lines are going to be probably reaching some of their lifespan on these older homes. Now, the wiring does not wear out, but you do have to have the systems upgraded to match the current codes. And usually that means modifying, not replacing. Anything yep. else? Nope. I just wanted to highlight that I think it's really cool how this is in the middle of a remodel. Everything is covered. We're maintaining everything to keep it safe, it's pretty clean. We could walk barefoot, so people are, our clients are living here, they're coming in and out. I think it's fair to mention that, although we have teams working here, they mm -hmm. did not know we were coming. No, they did not. We did not ever forewarn them, them, because I always like to see what's happening, yep. and we don't need to be trying to impress people on the video. We could always block that out of a video. Yeah. <laughs> but, but we are trying to see what our jobs look like at all times, and this is what we want to see. Even little tools like this, not laying directly on countertops, it's on cardboard. Mm -hmm. This is this is the way we do things. And as Morgan said, nothing that would trip or cut your toe. If you're coming around here at night barefoot, you're going to be you're not going to have any problems. Yeah. So a barefoot clean policy really works well. Hi, <laughs> Rudy. <laughs> And so if you have any awesome. questions, let us know in the comment box because we'll be able to answer questions in the comment box as well. But I hope you all enjoyed this sneak peek at our almost finished Alamo Heights mid-century modern kitchen remodel. And we'll show you the final as soon as it comes out.